your presentation personally. Actually, if I could add one more thing that I thought about, um, and that's to somehow um, when you're talking to whoever you're meeting with, is incorporate the fact that this is an important issue for their constituency. Make sure that this kind of affects their bottom line and their re-election chance chances. So, um, yeah, just basically make sure that this is an issue that's not just you personally are interested in, but it, it's, some, it's, a, it's a message or, uh, that resonates within the cons uh, constituency as well. And, and with uh, kind of the, the districts that AFSC and our coalition partners are most interested in, and that's usually not my representative, who is Luis Guterres, unfortunately, just because of time and so on. My representative, uh, Guterres, has a one, of, I mean, a minus three on that report card, so <laughs> pretty uh, bad record, and I was just looking at his um, voting on these resolutions, always on the wrong side. I haven't seen one where he's voted positively, but maybe I haven't been through everything. And my ask, I'm going to use a couple of the asks from, from the uh, workshop earlier, but I'm going to ask my representative to attend a mock congressional hearing that AFSC is holding in Chicago um, next month. Mm -hmm. And I guess a do is, it's related to that um, last one, do make your presentation personal in that, uh, for example, organizations that bring speakers, uh, Palestinian and Israeli speakers to town, I think it's an excellent idea to bring those speakers to uh, congressional offices. I guess now is uh, our chance to share with you our experiences, um, beginning with Ryan. Uh, I want to speak about two, two experiences, like uh, successful experiences that I've had in the last few years. Uh, but before that, I just want to focus on um, uh, two lessons that I have learned through the many uh, local visits that uh, I've gone through and many con congressional and, uh, members and staffers that I have. Number one is uh, the smaller the ask, the more impact we can have. Uh, now, uh, most of my work is on um, on Iraq, not on Israel, Palestine. But for example, I, I have never worked on something like going to a congressional office and saying, "Let's have a resolution to withdraw from Iraq," because things don't work that way. Uh, that's huge. That's a, a, like a big, big step. Our organization us as individuals are too small to try to cause this gigantic impact. You know, these impacts happen when you know presidential elections happen and the new president comes. I mean, we can't have it when we go to a, a congressional office, even if the congressional office wanted to have it, they can't. So the scale, you know, the scale and the face of the Congress is very different than uh, what um, I, what I feel many people expect. The face is very small. And our scale is very small. So the smaller the better, the, the better is number one. And number two, the more uh, focused uh, to, uh, uh, our audience uh, are, uh, the better. So instead of contacting, for example, the president or the State Department or uh, you know our congressional office generally, how can we find the one person that our voice will uh, actually affect, will leave a dent? You know, s sending uh, emails or um, phone calls to the general phone at the White House that gets tens of thousands of phones a day, it didn't really have that much impact, you know. It's fine. It's like this background noise, you know. It's, it's okay to, to have it there. But if we actually are working towards something, um, I think this, the more uh, precise our audience is, the 
promote uh, effective recapture. So the two ex experiences I want to talk about is uh, one of them is um, <coughs> regarding uh, information and the other regarding uh, legislation. Uh, now, I devoted years of my life, like the last three or four years since I moved to DC, working on one major issue, which is uh, one fact, one fact, all of my time, you know, I have tens of thousands of dollars that were spent on my salary, hundreds of hours of my work, just to push one fact. The one fact is that the Iraqi parliament is against the occupation. That's, that's the one fact that I brought. It's a very small fact, you know. I repeated it thousands of times in the last four years, thousands of times. Now, when the, uh, there was a, a moment where we were approaching uh, signing an agreement with the Iraqi parliament, I thought that is a moment to actually push even further for that fact. So I worked with other organizations, uh, including, you know, I, I used to work with AFSC alone, now I worked, I worked with AFSC and Peace Action, FCNL, and other, many other organizations. We started a campaign to uh, try to bring Iraqi legislators and Iraqi parliamentarians to Washington, D.C., so that Congress members can hear it from the horse's mouth bring an Iraqi parliamentarian, put it there, put it there and let him say, we actually at the parliament are against the occupation. Uh, that's the project, right? Now, that took months to raise funds for. We needed you know, tens of thousands of dollars to bring two parliamentarians to the US. We generated thousands of emails and phone calls to uh, Congressman Delahunt's office uh, to, to pressure that. Now, all of these things, just so that I can have three minutes to discuss the issue with Congressman Durant. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. I swear to God it was three minutes. <laughs> he called me after like all of these you know, campaigns and people calling and harassing them. He called one, one day, they said, the Congressman wants to meet with you in uh, the Rayburn room. It's uh, one of the rooms uh, in, the, in the Capitol building. And uh, yeah, so I went there. Uh, and he was talking to someone, he came outside, he said, you know, what do you want? <laughs> and I said, uh, you know, this is my name, I work with uh, a small organization, and we have enough funds to invite two Iraqi parliamentarians to testify before your committee. And we want you to send the invitation, and we will cover all of their expenses, and they will say that they want the US to leave, and they will say that any agreement signed with Iraq must include a timetable for troops withdrawal. And he said, okay. And then he went back inside. And then we had a, a, a hearing there, you know? So I mean, I think until like reaching to that moment where the congressman said, okay, it took, you know, months and months and months of preparation. And then we ended up bringing the Iraqi parliamentarians and they did bring uh, actually official letters from the Iraqi parliament signed by the majority of parliamentarians saying, we will not ratify any agreement unless it has a timetable for all troop withdrawal. That changed the debate in the US, and that was one major point that actually now changed the US plan. Bush administration's plan was to leave to permanent bases in Iraq, and, you know, and troops indefinitely. Now Obama will bring all the troops home according to the new plan. So it's a completely different uh, setting based on one piece of information. Now, if, when I think how much money and, and um, time was invested, I think at least the organization that I have worked with invested at least hundreds uh, of thousands of dollars in, in this effect, between my salary and my other people's uh, salaries, and the money that we brought the delegations, every delegation costed us around $40,000. And the money that we spent on advertisements and stuff, all of this to say the Iraqi parliament is against the occupation. So imagine how much capacity we need to push one little piece of information in an issue that is not as controversial as the Israeli-Palestinian issue, you know? Uh, the, Iraq, uh, the occupation of Iraq is not as controversial uh, as the Israeli-Palestinian issue. I mean, I think the Israeli-Palestinian uh, conflict and, and uh, that the war on Israel-Palestine is closer to maybe abortion than, than Iraq, you know? It's like a standoff. I mean, you can't just bring one piece of information that would be a silver bullet, right? And people are like, oh, 